Yo, yo, what's up? We're doing the production breakdown for Red to Be Blue. So first up, Holly had an idea for some chords which were a bit more 6-8 kind of vibes. They were like, dun, ga, ga, dun, ga, ga. I wanted to mess it up a little bit, so I tried to make it a bit more wonky and rhythmically funny. That's just my acoustic, but we put some cassette stuff on it. So we got this, doing a lot of heavy lifting. It's a bit too full, so this makes it more lo-fi. Although once we get to the next section, we turn that off and we also add an octave up, but like I've digitally done it up. I didn't actually re-record it. So it sounds like this. Sneaky this one. That starts off the whole song and then we go immediately into Holly's vocals, which were actually the demo vocals. I had a dream we were lying outside on the bonnet of my old car. Beautiful. But then to build it up a bit, we started adding in just like one note at a time chord kind of stuff like this. Into the new chords. For that little interlude section. There's a bit of panning going back and forth as well. We also plopped in a couple of weird bloopy lo-fi drum sounds. Doing some crazy EQ stuff, cutting off all those highs. And then when those chords change, we also hit this bass thing. Then after that interlude, we have another verse with some more intense drums. We've got some more fun synthy chordy things as well. Kind of weird granular synthy things. sort of like fades out into reverb at the end there. I had also just gotten this plugin, which is when you drop in any kind of audio file and it finds a tiny little grain. It's called granular synthesis. You get a tiny little grain, just repeats it over and over. And that's how we got some of those sounds before as well. But this is a more grainy sounding one. Just like really tactile high sounds. We did a bunch of vocal production stuff too. So we got this. Oh, that reminds you to empty your brain as you leave. Just trying to sing that really like, ah have that vocal fry thing in your voice. Here I had to play with some formant stuff. Come in a nightmare, open the menu and pick some place nicer to be. Just automating that formant so it sounds lower or higher in different spots. And then we hit the first chorus, which is where the live drums come in for the first time properly. Overhead's doing this sort of more crisp top end. And then the room making it really like it sounds quite muddy by itself, so I took out a bunch of the lows, doing this kind of stuff. And then crunch it up heaps with distortion and a bit of room reverb. Then we lay out the samples over it. These ones. Bit of verb on that snare too, which I don't normally do, but that felt right for that bit. We also brought in this bottle kind of synth. paired with the old one. Doing a lot of suspended extension notes in the scale within the chords. We got both our vocals in here. Ooh, you're just too good to be true. Then we have another interlude afterwards, which has some more lo-fi drums. We don't have ooze, but I did put in snippets of audio from in between some of Holly's vocal takes. So they're just filling out the sound of like ambience just to give a little bit more realness, shittiness to it because it felt too clean without it. So that just helped pull it all together a bit. Then we hit my verse, which is where we have these weird, crazy drums. And we have one of my favorite plugins on that called Digitalis. And that's just this weird MP3 emulator thing. Not as tactile, not as like punchy. So if I turn this off, it sounded like this. Which I thought was a little bit bland sounding. This just made it sound a bit weird. And it looks cool as hell as a little cat. And his name is John. Very fun. I love it. Here we start to get a little bit more backing vocal action from Holly. Dun and I picked the leaves from your hair. Skin to skin, we were caught up out of breath. I'm still waiting for it to kick in. And her vocal. And I'm in a nightmare. And I'm in a spin. Pitch it down. If that was true, I would keep running after you. And then we hit chorus two, which starts with this absolutely hectic guitar part. 
There's not much going on there. It's just a clean guitar. Bunch of distortion. It sounds quite bright and a bit brittle. Brigade chorus. And I find this chorus sort of dulls the tops just a little bit, so it's a little bit less pokey. Although for some reason I put them back in with uh, the shapeshifter. There's more distortion, a bit of compression to keep it all together. I've automated the pitch of this delay, so it gets these woo as the delay recompensates. Have a mess around with automating your delay times and you'll get like those weird sounds. So that has a little solo moment and then everything slams in. We get like a bass fill in and a drum fill in at the same time, yeehaw. Sticks. We also have this weird guitar drone, which I would have made through a pedal I have on my guitar pedal board called Microcosm by Hologram. And it just makes these weird like, also a kind of granular delay thing. That's so just plucking one note. And then I found a little bit that I liked and looped it. Bit of distortion, bit of the cassette thing. Cassette! And then soothe to make sure it's not too pokey. Nice. And same thing we did in the first verse where we just gradually added more and more notes. So that's just acting as a synth background chord thing. And then the last thing for this section we have is some awesome backing vocals from Holly. Ooh, And then finally, we just have these chill solo vocals at the end. I try to process these a little bit less so it feels a bit more vulnerable. And Holly sent me this crazy vocoder thing. Wild. I tried to pan that around a bunch and I just laid it really quietly underneath the other two. And that's pretty much the song. Go check Holly Hebe out. She's really awesome. Go check me out. I'm really awesome.